uh, by visiting our website www.niletiesel.org. Again, www.niletiesel.org. Uh, there you will find a section for membership. Uh, you can just click on this section. You will be taken to a new page. You will find information about membership. Then um, if you click more, you will be taken to a, thir a third page in which you find an application. You provide your basic information, your name, your email, your affiliation, and so on. And you just click submit. And in this way, you will be members the same second you click submit. Okay, membership is free, and um, you get a lot through being a member. You are invited to all the PD events we we arrange. Uh, also, you will get all the news about our grants, scholarships, and everything Nile Tiesel offers. So please register as members and encourage your colleagues to be to to register as members because again it's free and you get what you get out of the membership is great um, any questions about Nile Tiesel or Nile Tiesel membership we will be sending you all the announcements of our events of the scholarships we offer, the t teacher training grants, travel grants, and so on. Thank you. Yeah, here we have a question about today's presentations. Uh, yeah, they will be available online. Now they are available online, actually. Now some people are watching us, okay, yeah, <laughs> but in the positive sense, <laughs> not in the negative sense, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, other teachers are watching the presentations and watching the event right now. Uh, it's available online with just a few seconds delay, okay. And after the event, we will be sending you the link and uh, also we will be sending the link to Nile Tiesel members. Uh, if you have the link, you can go to the website and you watch the recording of the whole day, of the whole event. Okay. Yeah, Amira, yes? Sorry. Uh, the materials for the presentations. The, you mean the PowerPoint slides and so on? Uh, Okay, I think Betsy uh, shared her email address with you. Okay, uh, will it uh, for the speakers for today's speakers? Will it be possible to share the power po uh, the PowerPoint slides with the audience today? Yeah. So. are things that since I, we're going to put this online, there are things out of academic integrity I have to document. And uh, there are things that are kind of, you know, still in the working, so probably that's something I'll remove. And I'll probably add more resources. And one final thing that I really encourage every one of you to go and check our assessment literacy project website. We have their uh, PowerPoint presentations, we have some resources, and also Hopefully within the next couple of months, we will have our uh, special interest group website. We're working on it, and I promise to send this to the Nile Tiesel mailing list once it's done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Rick? Yeah, fine. Okay, so the, uh, about today's uh, material, uh, they will be available, okay? We will share with you the same people who registered and attended. We will share with you the emails of, the pre of today's presenters, and then uh, you can email them, and they send you the, all the material for today's presentation. As uh, Dr. Ata said, we yeah. 
So uh, we will uh, keep it until later. <laughs> okay. Uh, as I said, um, I'm here today for gap filling. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's uh, welcome Mayada Zaki. Mayada is working as an assistant lecturer at the British University in Egypt. Okay, and Mayada will be talking about FLIP, blog, and evaluate. Please join me in welcoming Mayada. Thank you. Okay, uh, my, my presentation will violate some Well, you know, the ah, you need it for the okay, like this. Okay, I'll try, but I have to move my hands. That's fine. That's good. Okay, um, I'll my presentation will violate some of uh, the rules we've been listening to since the morning, uh, because I'm focusing today on performance assessment, uh, interaction in the classroom, and. Um, uh, trying to avoid traditional uh, testing, okay? And I think, why did I choose flipped classroom, though we don't apply it in Egypt yet that much? Um, but it reminded me of some of my secondary school teachers who uh, we used to underestimate, by the way. <laughs> and we used to say, this teacher doesn't like to teach, he doesn't like to work. And what those teachers used to do a long time ago was actually what is now called flipped classrooms. <laughs> so it's what's required recently. And I think flipped classrooms are very important. And I think we have to find a way out. And I think, though it needs technology, um, it's not difficult to apply even in governmental schools or schools who uh, doesn't have uh, the luxury for a lot of technology and but we have to try hard because we'll be very far behind if we don't start now um, and this is why I thought we have to work on this um, flipped classrooms are are simply paving the way for online education which I believe is inevitable inevitable in the future um, and it depends a lot on blended classrooms which uses online education and it's trying to pull out the teacher gradually out of the classroom okay so the only relationship between the teacher and students will simply be assessments so your role now will not be a teacher anymore or te for teaching and instructing anymore you are an assessor, <laughs> so you're only assessing, <laughs> okay? And this will what will happen in online education in the future. Uh, so let's now think of flip, blog, and evaluate. So first of all, what is, um, by the end of this session, let's follow assessment rules. My LOs, uh, my LOs will be, you will be able to design a lesson plan for a flipped classroom, match, classroom objectives to appropriate performance task, tasks, select a multimedia task that matches the lesson objectives, and design a task-specific rubric. I hope we, we can have time. We'll not be able to master all the rules, but at least we'll have an idea. So what's a flipped classroom? It is, what is this? Okay, why are you reading it like this? You should be reading it like this. Turning the traditional classroom model on its head, upside down. And, but uh, one of the definitions I liked was on um, Washington University, I think, website, one of the professors said, no, I don't believe it's turning it on its head, it's turning it inside out. Okay, so uh, it's another way. How are we going to do so? What's a flipped classroom? It's a model of teaching in which a student's homework is the traditional lecture viewed outside of class on a vodcast or a video or YouTube video or whatever. Then class time is spent on inquiry-based learning, which would include what would traditionally be viewed as a student's homework assignment. So what we are used to give to students as homework 
No, won't be done at home anymore. It will be done in my classroom. And what I'm doing in the classroom will simply be done by the student independently at home. Um, and would include what would traditionally be viewed as a student homework assignment, and that's synonymous with reverse classroom. Another uh, very good definition I liked is that, uh, no. what happened? Okay, material traditionally presented in the classroom is studied outside. What we used to give to the students in the classroom is studied outside, often in the form of online videos or narrated slides or worksheets that are testing memory only definitions, okay? That frees up class time for engaging students in activities like discussion and team projects. Faculty interact with students instead of lecturing them. Okay. So, simply what are we going to do is the opposite. We used to teach in the classroom. In the classroom, you're giving knowledge, comprehension. At home, in the homework, students used to apply, analyze, synthesize, evaluate, create. What we're going to do is the opposite. They are going to do this part at home, they are responsible for knowledge, get, attaining knowledge. They are responsible for the understanding knowledge. Sometimes in other, uh, uh, in other uh, uh, pictures, I saw application included under this part at home. They may apply some simple sheets. And then in the classroom, they do the higher cognitive skills, skills which is synthesis, analysis, and evaluation. And this is what you are going to help them do. So don't teach them anymore. Don't give them the information. Just send them a video. Send them a PowerPoint presentation. Send them worksheets of definitions to fill at home. OK? But OK, let's, let's again. So what is the time spent in the classroom? Most of the time is spent in creating and Evaluating then the least is analysis. Here, applying is included at home, and there, there is a short part for applying in the classroom. Okay? Okay. I can send you the PowerPoint. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what are the teachers? What do you expect this classroom to look like? Mm. Engaging or chaotic? Interaction. Active engagement. Well, there will not be TTT at all. It's zero percent. So there is no teacher talk at all in this flipped classroom. Yeah. Great, thank you for the question. So your responsibilities as a teacher are, the teacher needs to make sure students understand the theoretical part. The teacher needs to confirm students have studied at home. The teacher needs to manage the noise in the classroom because it's all their analysis and discussions and groups. And the teacher needs to monitor everyone is working and participating in the analysis and group work activities that we're going to discuss. The teacher needs to assess their performance. So the classroom now is simply an assessment of performance. How are you going to do this? How can teacher do all that? How are you going to do it? You can simply Flip. <laughs> you need to do this <laughs> to be able to manage everything. So, flip. Okay. What are we going to do to flip? We need a hmm, steps for designing. We need a flipped lesson plan. What are the flip the steps we need? So, number one, list out every single concept and every single activity in a list. Okay, you need, because activities here are very important. It's the main classroom. You need to list them. It's not like just you have an idea in mind, so you decide to use it in the class, you will fill in the time. It won't work. So you will take all the time of the classroom for activities. You need to list them. 
Number two, sort the list into categories. What students can do at home and what students need your help with in the classroom. Number three, begin the elimination process. Remove things, eliminate. Do you really need to teach all of that in the classroom? Or can they do it at home? What has been redundant and repeated? So let's remove it away. Oh, let's give it to them at home. Why is your lecture so long? Can we make it shorter to make it easier for them when they depend on themselves? OK, do they have to take notes on that or not? Can I see the notes? How can I make use of the notes in the classroom? Why are you even reading the book? OK, so eliminate the steps. And create a student-centered plan. Flipped classroom depends on student-centered work, student's choice. If you can make them choose the ILOs, make them choose the ILOs. They choose, OK? So choose content and knowledge to study. You can give them, and this is why you need to prepare a lot of material for them to study at home. So you can prepare for them um, more than one worksheet, more than one PowerPoint, more than one video that can help them. Hmm? Definitely, definitely. Definitely, you'll have to give them the link. Yes, thank you, which is the coming step. Okay, process, okay, should be chosen by them, material used, and the product, and even the assessment. So it all depends on the student, work, and choice. A plan. This is a flipped plan, and I'm going to ask you now, together, in groups, um, I'll give you charts, and I'll ask you simply, you'll not write a, a whole plan, but we will have a table of three columns, and I'd like you to think of a lesson that you used to teach in the classroom and flip it, and think how, what are the tasks you're going to put before classroom at home, which tasks you're going to teach them in the classroom, and which tasks you're going to teach them, uh, how you're going to assess them through other activities. I'll show you the table now. But I'm saying this so that you can concentrate with the steps here, because they will help you while doing the activity. OK? OK. So the lesson title, subject area, the grade level here, time needed 6 to 80 minutes at, at home and 6 to 70 minutes in class. You have to consider the time that should be spent at home. Okay, which we never uh, thought of before in homework. We just give them homework. To have to think how much time of their time will be allocated to this lesson. Learning objectives, including your objectives, should include cognitive behavioral objectives because you're now testing higher cognitive skills, as we said. So students will be able to. Okay. Here, you're going to do it as this. Students learning resources at home. And you put in structure video. For example, I thought of the cause and effect writing. OK? So you give them YouTube video, for example. And you have the link. Supporting ideas for how to support their ideas on other video. And then maybe games that requires only application and knowledge. OK? So like matching definitions, matching reason with a topic sentence, whatever, and find the reasons for a problem. And then student learning activities at home resumed. Again, you give them outline template to fill, something that they can do alone. OK? And then we move on, classroom activities. You pick what applies in the lesson. So students brainstorm in class. They discuss a problem. OK, in group, they address common problems and facilitate whole group discussion on essay format, ideas. OK, maybe not an essay at all. Maybe they can, they are, um, they can be required to create a blog. And we will see, or a website, uh, about a problem where they have to write about the causes and effects. So we'll go out from the traditional essay four paragraph thing to writing the essay within in a realistic, more realistic context, which is a blog a website, defending a cause, okay? Not just the paper with the cause and effect, and then after you give it to them and you ask them again a couple of weeks later, they'll tell you, how can we write a cause and effect essay? Right, don't they do this? They, they get confused sometimes and they forget it. But if it's a project that has a process, they do it at home, they choose the cause, they create a blog, 
they will never forget it. And they'll be more enthusiastic to defend their cause. They use more reasons than effects. And finally, assessment. How do you plan to assess their performance, to assess what they have acquired? So create your own blog on one of the problems in Egypt and discuss its causes and effects. This is how you assess it. Or read an article on our class blog and write the effects you think such problem can lead to. So you read the problem and they discuss the effects. And of course, choose the task according to students level. Okay? If you, do, if you need them to write short uh, paragraphs, then you can do the second one. Class blog, you give them a reading, they simply support their uh, opinion or write reasons of a problem in a small, short paragraph. If you need them, if they can, create their own blogs, create websites. And by the way, even creating their own blog can match with intermediate level. And I have a sample here that I'm planning to show you. Okay, there. Okay, so this is our worksheet. Can we please try to think about it? And I hope we, sh we shouldn't take a long time because we have other things to discuss. We need to discuss more activities and rubrics, okay? So um, I, I'll give you a chart, and I would like you to make a column on the chart like this. And please use the first part of the chart, because I'm going to use the other half in a rubric, okay, design, so in another activity. So don't, we don't need all the chart. Um, and I'd like you to write your ILO. Think of one that you've already been teaching, okay? And uh, what, how are you going to test, uh, what are the, you going to give them at home? And during class, what are you going to do? And after class, what are you going to do? Okay? I want one thing in each. I'll tell you why. Because you're going to change it now after we discuss the activities that we can use. So there is another thing. But I saw of putting this activity now after the lesson plan before we forget the steps. Or you can leave it blank, just one, and leave the rest blank so that we can update it with after or modify it after we see more uh, activity, multimedia projects, okay?
Okay, and then here they would contribute to the discussion. Okay, so here we are checking, we are measuring fluency, and here we are going to measure accuracy. Okay, so you want them either to work, work together in pairs? Yes. They can work in pairs. Okay, my, my aim here or my focus is just fluency. Yeah. And I, 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 yes. Hey, so you can put them either together. Here it could be brainstorming, it could be either um, camp work okay. or group work, exactly. Um, yeah. Maybe this can be a whole class. It could, could be half a class. Here it could be individual, one to one. Why you don't be quiet except when I count one, two, three? But it works. So um, I stopped here because the task is not cannot be complete yet now. But I want you to I wanted you to grab the idea. Okay? Now you understand how it works. Okay? How the lesson plan works. Okay? So we'll resume and I'll give you more ideas that you can use and then you can add to the activities of your lesson plan. So, let's move on. Now, for the flipped classroom, you need also to make an assessment plan. So, it's for the whole course. So, you need to know how exactly you're going to assess your student's performance. A project can simply um, can compile or like a web quest at the end, you can compile through it different small activities to one big project at the end. Okay, because you won't al always have the luxury or have the time to give a big project after each assessment. So you need to make a lesson plan. And this is uh, also part of the traditional classroom, so it doesn't make any difference. But I think the difference will be in how you're going to think about it. You're going to think about it differently. Okay? So this is important, and percentages. Threaded discussions here, collaborative work is 10%. In a flipped classroom, if your objectives, ILOs, will depend on threaded discussions, you'll make a better use of them, then you need to give them more than 10%. Because they will be evaluating more than one ILO in the course. So this is different. This is a writing course. 
Um, and it's a traditional one. I, I, I don't um, claim that this is a flipped classroom lesson plan. It was a traditional classroom <laughs> lesson plan. But I mean the idea and how you use projects at the end, how you're going to divide the steps of a project, or how are you going to have different tasks, different small projects maybe. Let's go through this. Material activities inside and outside the classroom again. Outside classroom you can use direct instruction via videos, texts, photos, handouts, worksheets, and notes. They can do it alone. Inside classroom you need labs, you need group works, quizzes, critical thinking tasks, active participation. So this is what we're going to do. Where should assessment come in and what is its function? So assessment in a flipped classroom doesn't have a specific time. It's integrated within the classroom. So every class is simply an assessment for what they have learned at home. Okay, and every class can have a small quiz. And this is why we need the lesson plan. Because you need to assess what they have learned at home. Even if you need, you can assess questions, their own questions about what they studied. So you can ask them, read at home, prepare questions for discussions, and you assess how they thought about the activity. Oh, and don't feel guilty that you didn't teach it, and teach it and then you're assessing them without teaching it. It's unfair. Let's first, don't feel guilty about it. Because you have a lesson plan, you divide the percentages into small pieces. So in some cases, you can, um, uh, I uh, watched the video from one of, I think, again, it's Washington University. They're discussing flipped classroom and professor said, sometimes we evaluate quantity rather than quality, like portfolios, for example. Did they do it one, two, three, four? And we do this in the British University in intermediate. So sometimes, how many reading passages did they do? And you, you evaluate quantity rather than, than quality sometimes. So don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty because it will evaluate their performance still. And you can have some of them on quality and some on quantity and some small parts on whether they did the tasks or not. And okay? You wanted to ask them? Um, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay, I'll tell you what. They are all, at the end, um, student-centered, communicative, task-based learning. It's, I think the flipped classroom is simply um, how it de has recently developed. Okay? The final format. The final form. And I think in task-based... Mm. Yeah, sure. It, it is an application of, but I can add a point. Yeah, uh, um, what's, your, what's your name? Dr. Safa is saying that this is simply that what is called, another definition for it is that task-based learning. 
and what's the difference? Um, okay, um, I was saying that this is flipped classroom is the most recent title used for student-centered classroom, communicative classroom, task-based learning classroom. And here it is focusing more on the idea that knowledge is outside class. In task-based learning, you give them the tasks in classroom, but it doesn't require you to, ask, to make them know all outside alone. You, they depend on tasks in the classroom, but you still have the opportunity, have, the, have a space for teaching. And this is what we've been doing a lot for the recent years, in, at least in, I don't know about governmental schools, how it works, but at least in private universities, in the British University, we've been using task-based learning for a long time. But this is more, as I said at the beginning, it's paving the way for online education. It's taking the teacher outside of the class, okay? So you're not instructing anymore, at all, at all, okay? And um, I, didn't, I didn't find the video, I should have wrote a video for a flipped classroom where the teacher is simply sitting there in the corner observing students, she doesn't talk. You don't talk in the classroom. So less teacher talk, not less teacher talk, zero teacher talk. Even answering, even answering of the questions, answering the questions about the lesson will be through students' discussions and group work. So it's simply, as I said, paving the way for online education. And this is why I felt that if this dominates the world, we will be stuck. Because the teacher and the blackboard that we're using by time will become out of fashion. And it's not about giving them a task to do in the classroom. It's about not being there, let them depend on them their own selves because they'll have to do it on their own later on through me media and computers. We are not there anymore. We're disappearing. We have to disappear. I don't know why. I don't know if it's good or bad, by the way. I'm not supporting the idea. But it, I feel it's inevitable anyway, whether we like it or not. This is how I feel it. Critical literacy, this is called critical literacy. Relating literacy to their real life projects. This is one of the projects you can use, yeah. A professor, you wanted to add more? The role of the teacher in the flipped classroom is to involve students in discussions. She can uh, listen to their questions. You listen to their questions and you respond. And of course, we'll, we'll go back to the idea of feedback, how you respond, not directly, but indirectly, how you can make them think about the answers. Uh, this is one way. A flipped classroom is a one way, by the way, sometimes they refer to it as blended classroom, or they get confused because it is a one form of blended classrooms where half of it is online, half of it is face-to-face. -face. And this is why I'm saying it's paving the way for a to complete uh, online um, uh, courses in the future. We have rubrics, by the way. <laughs> so we have... But uh, project-based learning, uh, 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 there are many roles for the students. One, one gathers information, the other will present. Uh, the, uh, the other one will uh, analyze, analyze information. So uh, uh, project-based learning is more comprehensive, and the roles are different. 
But in task based learning, there is only a role, one role and one task uh, to present only. Now, for example. Okay, can we can we move on because it will make it clearer when you see the kind of online multimedia projects that are mostly used in these cases. Okay. It will make it uh, clearer for, it will answer a lot of questions. So here, uh, ILOs and activities assessments function as reinforcement of learning and evaluation of performance. So you're not only evaluating performance, through the task they are, lear it's still in the process of learning, okay? Because they did it alone and now they are doing the task. So assessment here is also for uh, reinforcing learning. Uh, forms of assessment can be a quiz inside the classroom, traditional or multimedia uh, projects. One of the methods used is blogging, okay? And there are different ways to use blogs. So it depends on which of, again, uh, what's your objective again? Are you, what exactly you're testing? So if it's remembering and understanding, you can have blog journaling, you upload an article for them and you want them maybe to find some parts and defini give definitions about it, to analyze it, to, so, uh, to understand whether they understood the reading article and their discussions or not. If you want to test evaluation and creation, they can have their own original blog and relate pictures and stories and causes and reasons for a cause, and it depends on the level you need as well, okay? Though I feel you can even manipulate this or you can tailor it for an intermediate level. And if you uh, simply ask them to put pictures about a cause and write only one paragraph, it will be intermediate level. So uh, commenting, uh, media clipping, videos, and they comment on it. And so it depends on uh, the, the objectives and what you need. Blogs for performance assessment can be used for online reading reaction journal. You can tell them post 500 word length response to a reading every week, for example, and you assess them every week. Okay, and write about points you didn't understand about the reading, for example. So here they will, this is part of understanding. Instead of you explaining the passage or explaining what's difficult, they will write the points and other students will react to their uh, answer and they will all answer each other. And then the teacher is not there. The teacher is there, by the way, but they like the a guiding angel. <laughs> so you're just facilitating everything, yeah. Uh, one age a group, but I've seen that they are using it with, of course, I'm not uh, discussing KG students, for example, or young uh, students, but um, but I, I think I have my relatives, okay, uh, primary students, and they have a Facebook account, and they write for me uh, under my pictures. Okay, and they give me some comments, and they put pictures and write a comment in it. Fourth primary, Karim, he's called my cousin. He does it. And uh, there is another one, uh, which is even younger, and she likes to put her pictures with her tattoo on her shoulder. <laughs> and, and she writes comments, and her friends comment on her pictures, and she uses a blog. So you can use it with fourth, third primary, you can do it. I, I think now it's not that difficult. And it depends on how you facilitate, how, how easy it is for them, okay? Um, relate the reading to historical uh, background. This is one of the ideas. Okay, formulate questions about the reading. This is one of the ideas. If you want to teach them how to form a question for primary students, they can. Uh, reply to one of your colleagues' posts and disagreeing with them, with their opinion, how to support your argument and opinion. So this is one thing you can use. Each student can create their own blog if you want to move to an, a higher level of creation. Upload relevant readings. They choose the readings. And this, in this case, you'll make sure they have read it. They can think, analyze them. They can relate them and upload them. Raise questions for discussions. They can upload relevant videos, pictures relevant to events, movie and its context and history. And I have here, those are actually websites, but I know not. Yani, let's give it a try. So, hope we have internet connection, right? Do we do? It's going to work? No, it's not. It's still not the 
Turn off the slideshow. It is working. It is working. This is a blog, okay, by a student. See, it's not difficult at all. It can be used for intermediate levels or uh, lower levels. It's not here. This is one of the blogs, okay? So, can I uh, show them the page? Yani scroll down. The same internet page, and I need to scroll down. Okay. So this is one of uh, of the blogs done by children. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> it's, uh, okay, it's saying goodbyes today. I write from one of my many homes. I'm no longer in Santiago, Chile, but in Florida for a short week. This is, see? So the language needed here is not difficult at all to evaluate. But it's relating, the stu student is relating it to their own life. It's becoming more personal and maybe to their own imagination if they are just imagining things maybe it hasn't happened but they are creating up, making up their own story whatever so if they are children young age you can use this for their imagination to enhance imagination and narrative uh, writing okay so this is one of the block can we scroll down see what's in under it so they can add pictures and relate to it okay Yes, they can add pictures related. Let's go down. They put pictures and write, write about it. And they create their own blog according to their own imagination, their own work. And of course, you have some ILOs. So if you're focusing on narratives, this can be good. If you're focusing on reasons, you can ask them to put different pictures. And what are the reasons for this? Why are two students fighting in the playground? Give me some reasons. What's the solution? And they put a picture and they solve it. So it depends on, on your ILOs at the end still. Yeah. Oh, yes. Let me, okay, um, I'm not claiming that flipped classroom, blended classroom now is for uh, uh, poor schools or for, uh, or for governmental schools. And this is why I'm saying we have to find the solution. And this is why I'm saying we have to find a way out or else we'll be far behind. Okay, flipping depends on blended classrooms. I've, I, I'll tell you something that's interesting. I've seen a video. Is it going to work with the other websites? Uh -huh. Where should I click? Up, okay. Up, yeah. Should I close it? Okay. Oh, on those. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've seen an, a very interesting video, uh, and I have it on my laptop. If we have time at the end, I can show it to you. It's for a researcher in education, an Indian researcher in education. It was a TED talk. And he tried, what he did was he wanted to find a solution for poor uh, students, uh, poor kids who live in the slums in India. And he decided to put for them computers under the trees. So he put a very old computer under a tree. And he left the computer for them. And then he, fa he kept observing the kids. They used to go to the computer, look at the things and read it and teach themselves. They didn't go to schools. They are slums, in, which are very poor category. And uh, the th they he, he tested them. He gave them a test at the end, and he found that the student, the kids scored high. And he first, uh, I, I think, and he tried it with secondary students' um, age, the age of teenagers, and he gave them physical uh, concepts, which were very difficult. He said he even didn't understand him them well. And then he gave him assessment at the beginning. After a while, they got 30 uh, percent, 
which he thought an achievement because nobody told them anything. And then after a while, they got higher, uh, even grades, alone. And he put the uh, computer under a tree. No, no, it was in the wall, stuck in the wall. Another, another uh, thing he said was, he gave, uh, he asked teachers, uh, mother, grandmothers, grandmas in Britain to volunteer, and he said, if you can read the story, please uh, send us. And he found many grandmas sending them, having online connection, and he put an old computer, really an old desktop, the white one, the big monitor, you know, this old one. Put it for the kids in slums, and the kids looked at the monitor, and they listened to the granny telling them a story, while she's telling them, she's asking some questions about vocabulary, about so, and the kids used to answer her as if she's there. And they were highly involved and they learned much. So, believe me, technology doesn't need. Well, I'm saying that it's not it's not a big deal if we think about it. It is an obstacle now, but we have to find the solution. We have to find a solution. We cannot always keep saying it's an obstacle, we'll not use it. No, it's an obstacle and we have to fix it up. It's our role to fix it up, find solutions, fight for it. Let's struggle for it because we cannot keep behind anymore, by the way. Because the gap is widening and widening so fast, more than before, so fast. So. So we have to fix it up. But we cannot keep saying we'll not be able to use it. No, we have to find a way and we have to use it. Why don't you use Facebook? Use Facebook for learning. OK, this is another uh, blog. Okay, uh, she they puts a picture for them. This was about the man, the woman in the red dress, and it was saying the woman was actually it seems was going for an outing to enjoy, and then uh, this happened in Turkey in Turkey's protests. So the woman, uh, this is what happened to her, and they give their comments and write about it. See how much they write. They can add more pictures, comment on it. So this is another blog. And what I like the most was this one. They choose a movie, they create their own blog, and they make introduction, context of the situation, historical background, the Western Fourth, and maybe my opinion here, bibliography here, if they are an advanced level. So they can talk about the movie and the history that the movie discussed at this era. And so this is one method. OK, I want to go back to my PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, if I close it, it's okay? Alt and tab. Okay. Work? Okay, great. So, quickly. This is uh, Twitter. Please, one of the, the uh, tips here, it's important, Doha, because you said, can I use Facebook? And one of the tips, try to match the um, the project or the multimedia with what kind of discourse you want to inf uh, reinforce. So if you want to use formal language, you can use websites. If you want to use short uh, forms, you can use Twitter because t Twitter doesn't accept more than 140 words in a tweet. So yes, so you have to use the method that will help you achieve your ILO. Okay? So in Twitter, those if you want them to create, if you want them to remember, if you want them to understand, if you want them to remember, you can simply tell them, define major elements of Twitter, hashtags, observe geographical trends, and so on. If you want them to apply, you can tell them, give an example of a tweet for an assigned political leader. Okay, illustrate popular trending tweets, paraphrase poems and books, and so on. If you want them to create, they can create a fake, fake, which yeah, we shouldn't teach them to do this, fake accurate Twitter profile for a historical or literary figure, and they imagine the kind of tweets this figure can put on Twitter, remix trending tweets with video and music to create their own page, criticize a Twitter user's argument, 
okay? Predict trending words and phrases based on current Twitter trends and world news, and so on. Many uses of Twitter. Thinglink is one of the most interesting and very easy projects. It's a picture. You choose any picture from uh, Google, and you can put on it any links you need. You can try Thinglink at home. It's very easy. Just the picture, the same way you tag pictures on Facebook. You tag the picture and upload a video and a reading article, and they can relate to the project. Okay? Or they can, you can ask them to do this. Okay? Write an essay. Write so an article related to the audio and the reading and so on. So the next one here. Okay, this is performance and assessment. We need, uh, what are the advantages? You assess the process and product, both of them. You assess it's meaningful, provides a variety of ways of assessment, enhances integration of all skills together. Okay, and final, um, I want to show you just to wrap up. A rubric. Okay. For um, now, how we are going to grade the, the, these blogs, these projects? Let's try to be fair still. You're going to design the rubric. I'll give you a sample of the rubric. I photocopied it so you can have a hard copy. Uh, you need to design the rubric, tailor the rubric to the task. Okay. And Sometimes we feel it's a little bit difficult to design a rubric for each task. However, um, it will be fair to the student, and we can do it easily. We, can, we don't have to make it complicated. Don't make it complicated. It's not a good rubric. Um, so just, and don't use 0.5 and from 2 to 4 and give them anything in this band. No, it, it's not the best way. The best way is to put, if these descriptors are available, you put a 3, just a 3 not from three to four, okay? If these descriptors are available, put a two. So it will be easier. Make your descriptors easy for the teachers to read. Don't make it too wordy. And try to make it determined. Determine what you need. Don't say almost as possible, as much, few, because please measure what's few for me, okay? It won't be always easy. Few for who? So. There are Ruby Star is one good site that can help you design your own rubric. And if you design it, one best way, there are a lot of websites. You can, what you can do is see what the task needs. So if the task needs content, you evaluate content, language, okay? And, um, and for example, should we evaluate cooperative work? Like participation in the group? Put marks on this. If it's a <laughs> yes, cooperative work participation. If you need to, if it's a blog, put put uh, marks on how they use pictures and design the page. No problem. I know we are language teachers and we keep resisting to do this. No, do it and give them mark for their efforts. It's motivating and it's fair. And. It enhances the language. If they do it all good, the language will be good. Okay, it's, it's all one uh, package, yes. So put marks on all. This is a rubric for a rubric that I found and I liked. So it's uh, here, evaluating uh, the task assessment, authenticity of the task. If it's an expert level, means the content and skills of task are highly relevant to your ILO by connecting to students' lives right now, more connecting to students' lives interactive. Open-ended, the task allows students to choose different measures for the task. Complexity contains many different skills, okay, in content, including higher level thinking. Um, and here, curricular connection, all of practitioner plus task incorporates. Yeah, anyway, it um, uh, follows the cur curriculum and standards and the ILOs. And here it's the rubric itself. So rubric areas rows, how many? Three to seven. See the novice, which is the lowest mark, fewer than three or more than seven will be complicated for the teacher to uh, follow up for each paper. So make it simple. Okay, last criteria, all areas contain objective descriptions, objective description. Okay, mix of numerically quantifiable descriptive words, 
um, curricular content, this is content and presentation upon exam. So this is, I'll give you this. So your rubric, try to make it simple, accurate. And don't be afraid to tailor it for the task. No problem. And let's have a free hand and let's take the hard route. Okay, let's take the risk. Let's try to use technology, let's try to use performance assessments and tasks and design and try with ourselves and with students. Nothing wrong will happen. Thank you very much. <laughs>